Good morning. It's Wednesday. Hump day. Wednesday, uh, July 26th. What I'm looking at behind me. My dogs are behind me. Sorry. I wish I could be that comfortable with my legs uh, spread out in the air, spread side to side, with a, a face laying on my stomach. There ain't no way I could sleep like that. But uh, these are things that you learn from dogs. Spy. <sighs> What more can we say? I, I think today's going to wind up being down a little bit. But, God, you know, the Dow is up 13 days in a row. We talked about it yesterday. The Dow's playing catch-up. The two old men ordering uh, soup in a deli are the Dow and, and IWM. So, uh, you know, where are we that would spy? Do you think we don't have a chance to go up again? Well, here's the thing. Uh, the weekly... If you take a look, I'm sorry, we're going to go to the monthly. The weekly is already crossed up, so you can see that MACD is kind of you know shooting up. You still have confirmation above there. You're oversold with the RSI at 70. Uh, but when you go to the monthly, <clears throat> here's the thing. We still have confirmation, and you're just crossing. The MACD is just crossing that strike line. The RSI is at 60, so it's not overbought yet. So from a monthly perspective... You're still doing pretty well. Now, when we take a look at uh, seasonality of this one, we go back to 1993, uh, and that's 31 years. Look, August is actually one of the better months at 63% win. You get into November, and it's a great month. You get into October, and it's a good month. September, eh, we probably want to sell in August and forget about September. September is just a weak month. But my point on this, and I'll post this in the newsletter, my point on this is, from a monthly perspective, we still have confirmation above that nine-day. The nine-day has just started to turn positive. The 50, the 200, and the 21 are all positive. You got this nice volume shelf here, uh, just above 4,000. So Tom Lee may be right. We may be going to 5,000. I mean, this is just, remember, today, priced in. Fed's meeting, you know what they're going to do? They're going to hike by a quarter percent. I mean, it's telegraphed at this point. We know this. So 100%, we know exactly what's going to happen. So SPY, I think you're still in that one. Do you buy into this one? I think buying in new is a little bit extended from an indice standpoint. But remember, uh, remember Bob, the, the, the article about Bob uh, basically investing $100 a month Every time the market is, or $1,000, every time the market's at an, its all-time peak. Still, he uh, retired a millionaire because he continued to put money into the market. Doesn't mean that you stop your 401k. Doesn't mean that you pull everything out in cash. It means you stay in the market even though it's high. It means every two weeks, your, uh, your, your paycheck, you get your 401k out, and it's auto-funded into a, a, a fund into an S&P tracking fund, into a, 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 a Russell 2000 tracking fund, into a NASDAQ 100 tracking fund, whatever your company offers. That's the key to building wealth is the long term and the consistency that you have to do this. I know that the podcast is called Daily Stock Picks and I'll give you stock picks. This should be a very small portion of your overall portfolio. Uh, I trade with less than 5% of my overall portfolio. The majority of my portfolio is in good companies with good earnings, with good management, with good products. And I just buy on pullbacks. You know what's a perfect example of this? Microsoft. Microsoft earnings were fantastic. They will continue to grow. This is a company that 100% is on the right path. What happened yesterday? Well, the only thing that happened, they were up. And then they were asked, well, when are you going to see the uh, the actual revenue from Copilot, which is their AI initiative that goes into their uh, Microsoft Office platform? And they sputtered and they, they stopped and they said, yeah, we don't know. And then somebody finally said, well, it might be late 2024, which means that they're not ready yet. Well, you know what? In my mind... That kind of puts you into, let's go to Seeking Alpha, because I want to see show you what I noticed yesterday. And it's Google announcing their earnings, which was fantastic. And you know what? 
Google is up, what, 7% in the pre-market? Microsoft is down 2%. Well, what I want to show you is Google, here, just Google versus Microsoft. I mean, simple as this, look at the update the chart, and let's look at year to date. Uh, Google's up 49, 46%, Microsoft is up. Look at the, uh, the one month. Uh, Google's up 6%. This includes, I think, today's. They've caught up. So essentially, the market just opened. So yeah, these charts are a little bit skewed. But Google was playing catch up to Microsoft. Here's the other thing that you have to know. When you go to Microsoft on Finviz, their forward PE is 31. What's Google? You know what Google is? 19. 19. Google will be a $150 stock by the end of the year. At some point in time, Google will be a, a $150 stock. That's quite a ways away from where it's right now. I want you to hold off on buying Google. Today, the, the price, yesterday, the price was anything under 120. Today, the, th the price is anything under 130. If you want to get into Google, I don't think you're doing it to yourself a disfavor. I think you're running to 150 this year. Here, look, all time highs around 150 on Google, I think you're heading back there. They're doing everything right. And that's the difference between Microsoft and Google. Microsoft ran up. Microsoft is not a bad company. They didn't do anything wrong. They just don't have the integration done yet. You know what? who does? Google. Google's got it integrated. So I, I want you to invest in good companies, with good products. If you're somebody who, who doesn't, you know, you're Warren Buffett and you don't use a computer. I mean, Warren Buffett, I think, still has a flip phone. But the guy's the number one investor in Apple. He doesn't, you know, always do it. But if you're a guy who doesn't use a computer, don't invest in Google. If you're a guy who uses Proton Mail or a woman who uses Proton Mail and doesn't use Gmail, don't get into Google. If you use DuckDuckGo, don't get into Google. <laughs> I know some guy okay, who used DuckDuckGo. So, again, use the things that you're – invest in the things that you're going to use. Now, Microsoft and Google, there was another one yesterday, Snap, Snapchat reported earnings. This is a company I've gotten given a bunch of Snap. You know from where? Weeble. Uh, Weeble. If you go to my link tree, L-I-K-T-R dot E-E slash daily stock pick, and you look – the third thing down here is Weeble, and you can get 12 free stocks, uh, 12 free shares. I get a bunch of shares, so I do get shares when you guys sign up. Uh, they've given me a bunch of Snap. Snap is down $10. I think this is an $8 stock by the end of the, uh, the, the, at the, end of the month. What are we, July 26? Probably an $8 stock by the end of the month. I don't want you investing in this one just because it's down. The problem with Snap is their advertising platform. Yes, they have tons of users. Talk to kids. Kids use this every day. Their advertising sucks. And you know where that advertising is going? It's going to Meta. It's going to Google. Google's ads were up. Meta just got you out with a 21% gain right here. I think anything under 300, you're at 298 right now. I think that's a good price. I think anything under 300 is a great price for Meta. You want to know why? Because their valuation is down. You're still 32% off your highs from Meta. And let's go to the, remember, Google is a 19. Meta's forward PE, 19. So I think you've got 330 in the bag on this one. Uh, it's 52-week range. You're 7% below your 52-week high was this 318. What makes me think that the year of efficiency, is Zuckerberg going to come on to his uh, his earnings call and say, you know, we decided to, uh, uh, we decided the metaverse is coming back. We're putting in $100 billion into the metaverse in the next quarter. No, the dude's going to talk about Llama, their large language model, their AI stuff. You know how many times AI was mentioned between Microsoft and Google yesterday? Just the two CEOs? 145 times. So Meta's going to do the same damn thing. You know, Meta has this run-up just like Microsoft did. I mean, they're up 100-something percent. I mean, look, if, if I told you to buy Meta 
back in November of 2022, just before the new year starts at $100, you guys would have been laughing at me saying, what the F are you talking about? The, 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 you know, Uncle Frank, who wants to talk about January 6th, that's not what I'm logging on to Facebook for. It's over. It's done, Johnny. They, they would, you know, say, it's over. It's, it ain't over. They have the best ad platform out there. If you are an advertiser, you are advertising on Facebook because of its prime targeting. They target the best. Google targets the best. You know who else targets the best? Amazon. Amazon ads will uh, will raise. So, uh, you know, the one that I want you to invest in now is Meta. They report after the bell. Uh, Upstart. There was a bunch of questions about Upstart. I like Upstart. The thing you have to know about Upstart is Upstart is still speculative. Still speculative. They are not making money. Let's go to, uh, well, where are we going? Let's go over here. Upstart. Upstart is losing $270 million. So they're losing money. Um, they're not making money. But this is one that, you know, it, back in May, could have bought a 13. You're at 62 right now. 62. One of the people that I follow on Savvy Trader is Brad Freeman. And if you go to Savvy Trader, it's just SavvyTrader.com, S-A-V-V-Y-T-R-A-D-E-R.com. Uh, stock market nerd, Bradley Freeman, I suggest you follow him. This guy just sold his upstart yesterday reluctantly. He sold his trading desk reluctantly. But his upstart sale was up 164%. The only reason he sold is because it became such a large portion of his overall portfolio. If you like Upstart, if you like Trading Desk, if you like that stuff, go follow him. I mean, he's really, really good. I'll include that stuff in my uh, my newsletter. Uh, Teamsters and UPS agreed to a deal. Huge. We're not, you know, you, you, your Christmas packages are on their way. Don't worry about it. Wells Fargo. How many of you mofos, how, how many of you degenerates told me I was wrong about Wells Fargo? I'm a boomer, man. You're a boomer. Wells Fargo, you're a boomer. They announced a $30 billion buyback. $30 billion buyback. Uh, they announced recently an increase in the dividend. Yeah, you're at $46. $37 back in May where I was saying, hey, financials have just taken too much of a hit. Yeah, Wells Fargo, 46 I think this is a $50 stock by the end of the year. At some point in time, it's a $50 stock. Um, one that I've talked about before that I actually think I, I was saying, Hey, it's a gamble to buy down here at 39. Great trade. If you bought at 39, you've doubled your money. You're at 86 DPST. This is a triple levered regional bank three times. I like this ETF. Now I think you're okay buying this one. We heard about PacWest getting bought out of the bank of uh, California yesterday. You can Google that one if you want 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 to. PacWest is way up, like 30%. Um, I like it. I like DPST. I, I think you can trade this on the 65-minute and feel very comfortable. Because when you look at a weekly of DPST, it's, got, it's down too much. I mean, that right there along the 50-day, you're, you're at 180-something. I think that's where you're probably going back to. Again, as long as we stay out, of the uh, out of the, the the dangerous regional bank stuff, there is a danger that more regional bank stuff starts to break as uh, they start to raise uh, interest rates even more. So just be careful of that one. <clears throat> I still say Schwab is a sixty five dollars stock. Um, or and let's see, let's look at Schwab. Schwab right now sixty six dollars. So I think it's seventy dollars. I mean, let's look at the long term of this one. <clears throat> prior to the regional stuff, $80 stock. I think it's going to get back to $80. It's a healthy, healthy bank. Um, Google beat earnings, anything under 130. Microsoft beat two. Microsoft just has run too much. The valuation would say that by Google here long term, Microsoft is priced higher and perfection is priced in. I agree. I think if you're getting into Microsoft for a long term, I think you're fine. I think if you're getting in short term, I think Google would be your play over that one. Snap missed earnings. Their ads revenue suck. 
Uh, Meta is going to be the play. Uh, Google and Microsoft Cloud. Amazon may be in trouble. Uh, Google and at Microsoft yesterday announced slight slowing of the cloud. It just wasn't gr It's still growing at, at tremendous pace, but it's not growing as fast as, as before. Um, this also may mean that Amazon may be in trouble. Um, the other thing with Dish, Dish and Amazon today, uh, and where is the news story? Uh, Dish and Amazon, here it is. Dish Networks partners with Amazon to offer wireless service. In fact, I have to post this in the newsletter. I'll copy this and post this over. Um, $25 a month. You know what else is $25 a month and you don't have to wait for? Visible. Visible service, which is right here, second one on my link tree. You get five, $20 off your first month. It's $5 for your first month. So I, I have this service myself. I won't pay anything more than $25 a month for unlimited service. In fact, if I go, I can get a, um, a like an 18 gig monthly data plan for like 20 bucks or something if I want to save. But <clears throat> Visible has been good to me. I like Visible. So go and click on that link. But just know if you're an Amazon Prime member, you will be getting uh, probably a shit ton of uh, advertisements for Dish phone service at $25 a month. I think it's their Boost. I think Boost Mobile is what Dish owns. Um, let's see. Boeing beat. Boeing is up. Let's see. What's Boeing up? 5%, 226 I've been screaming, get this one under 200 right here at 209. You could have gotten uh, back here in the beginning of June. You were under 200 back here. I mean, 200 seems to be the swing point when it gets to 220. Sell it. I mean, you know, Boeing's going to have another problem. You know this. Boeing's just not a good company. Coke, I said get Coke under 60. What are you at right now? 62, 63? Yeah, 6206. That's where you're at right now. Get it under 60. Hold off. You know, they had a great quarter. Great quarter, great dividend, great compounding. Just buy and forget this one. That's what I did. Spot earnings. I will post uh, all of the spot earnings stuff. Here's my thought overview on spot. Uh, overview of spot is uh, users up, both paid and free. Revenues down, costs up. So it's not a demand problem. It's definitely a 100% cost issue. Spot, I don't think that you buy this one on, on the dip right here. And the reason I don't think that you buy on the dip is just because it's had quite a run up. And if we look at this, it's using that 200 day as resistance at 164. So right now, even though you're at 142, I just don't think that the, the benefit happens until you get down towards probably about 130 or so. And I think that right here at one about 120, 120 to 130. I think anything in the 120 handle, I think you pull the trigger on this one. But understand it is a cost problem and they haven't been good at, at holding costs to the line. Now, I talk about this one every now and then, but it's a fantastic example of how a good company can be a bad stock. This is App Harvest. If you're vegetarian, if you're plant-based, you know App Harvest. App, type, uh, App Harvest is awesome. Uh, they do uh, organic, sustainable food company backed by Martha Stewart. Uh, I really like this one. They just announced bankruptcy. If we go back um, a while, I think it was last year, we were talking about this one for a while in that I, I really like this one. Um, and it was around here where it was about $5 or so. And it kept bouncing up, bouncing up. I said, the problem is cost here. And they just don't have a way to uh, increase their revenues while uh, decreasing their costs. And that was the issue. They just announced for Chapter 11. APPH is the thing. I am going to basically put to, uh, I'm going to put to. What I makes a stock a great put. potential? This is a uh, trading lab. How to find stocks to day trade. Uh, spoiler, he basically sells you a screening service. Do not get the screening service, but I do think the overall video is a great watch. It basically goes over uh, how low float and high volume is the key to day trading. That's what you want. And I've said this before. I've got this stock. It's, uh, let's see, pre-market movers. I've got it. It's investing.com. 
if you want to see pre-market movers, if you want to see low float, uh, high volume at, at currently trading, it's these stocks right here. And this opens up at about 4 a.m. And they, they do it live so you can see exactly what's moving. Just go to investing.com. But I want you to watch this video because if you're day trading, this is how you day trade. You find a stock with high volume pops and, and low float. And this video shows you exactly how to do it. The other one that I'm going to include in the newsletter so is I a video we about how to buy and hold forever dividend portfolio. It is an absolute masterclass in how to basically analyze stocks in order to put into a buy and hold portfolio. I do not, I repeat, I do not agree with his holding, uh, uh, buy and hold portfolio. I do not. Uh, but I do think that this is a great masterclass in how to learn to set it up. So I'm going to include it. Uh, let's talk about earnings today. Meta reports after the bell. Coke already uh, uh, reported. Thermo Fisher was down. Union Pacific way up. Uh, UNP was way up. And the reason UNP is up is not because of their earnings. It's because they're basically getting an entire new uh, uh, suite of C-suite. Look at that gap. I mean, you went from 217 up to 240. Just And it's not earnings. The earnings were fine. But, you know, new uh, management, that, that sparks crazy moves in a stock. Boeing, way up. ServiceNow reports after the bell. AT&T reported. ADP reported. I'll include all the reports so you can go and check the, uh, the, the stock out on their own. Now, I was listening to Jim Cramer last night. Yes, every now and then I do have Jim Cramer on. And he was talking about this stock that just IPO'd, Oddity, ODD. It's an over-the-counter, uh, direct-to-consumer, I should say, uh, beauty brand. And overview. And I'll see if I can find the video. I'll link it in the, uh, in the, uh, the newsletter. But overview, he was going over if Oddity had the valuation that uh, Elf. And you guys know if you've tuned in, I bought Ulta. Uh, Sherry bought Elf. Elf is greatly outpacing Ulta. Uh, Elf is a beauty brand that just has exploded. If Oddity uh, had the valuation, this is an $80 stock. It's trading at 50 bucks today. It's an IPO traded on the 65 minute. I think you'll do fine on the 65 minute. Right now it has you out of it, but I think it's going to get you back in. Uh, I think $50 is the swing on this one. Don't throw all your money into this thinking, oh my God, I'm going to YOLO. This is like, if you have $5,000, throw 50 bucks at this. It's not going to make you poor, but that 50 bucks could absolutely turn into a hundred bucks overnight. Um, and it's not overnight. It's not going to do that overnight, but over the next couple of months, it could. Uh, I like this one. Um, and, and, you know, Kramer did convince me. Whatever you think of Kramer, I think he inverse always works. I think whatever he likes does seem to go down. Uh, but overall, when he does a very detailed look at a stock, the man knows what he's talking about. I just put this little disclaimer on this. He's a guy, he's an old dude, and he's talking about cosmetics. That's my problem with Jim Cramer is that he may not know something that you do. So check it out. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs, <clears throat> they reported yesterday. Um, I hold this one at about a 16, I think $17, uh, average Brian. Uh, it got you in yesterday, 1784. Uh, we're talking about scans right now, but by, by, by the way, this is the scan 1733 right now it's trading. I think you get in. I think there's a $20 stock by the end of the year. Uh, next Terra energy NXE. <clears throat> next gen energy um this one secondary cross up it's just kind of been sitting there 474 it got you in it's trading at 473 today so uh their earnings are coming up august 3rd um another one that is a triple levered etf uh it's a bear on the financials it crossed up here now remember this one would indicate 
the financials are going to go down and this stock would go up. It's a bear three times levered. 1648. This has not been a very good stock of late because the financials have been going up. But have they gone up too fast, too far? Eh, 1648 might indicate that. Here's the way the algorithm works. If you bought this uh, ETF two years ago, uh, 24 months, you'd lose 40%. If you listen to the algorithm, you'd make 16%. So listening to the algorithm on that one actually makes sense. Uh, Baidu, we talked about China yesterday. Um, China's going to basically uh, put money into their economy. That's going to be a crazy, crazy good stimulus. Baidu, B-I-D-U. 148.63, you're trading at 150. Now, if we go back long term on this one, uh, you can see you're just kind of hugging that 200 day. Nothing huge. I think when you get under the 200 day on this one, I can think you can trade over the 200 day. But I like that one. I like that one there a lot. Uh, another China company, Baba. <clears throat> I think Baba's going to 120. I think at some point in time this year, Baba hits 120. I think you have some downside here going back to the 200 day. I think anywhere between 91 and 96, I think you can ride this to 100. I think maybe you get to just over 100. If you get to 100, I would say pull the trigger and maybe pull some off. I, I just don't trust the Chinese companies. Uh, finally, for the scan up, Okta. Okta's got this big gap up here. 71.45 is the, the buy. You got this enormous gap from the earnings back here in May. Uh, you don't have a catalyst, but Okta, several times it's had this buy. You thought it was going to cover it. Didn't cover it. Came down. You thought this one, nice little run here, 0.72% uh, got you out. You could have gotten out right up here. This one with the buy at 71.45 could be the one that takes it up. Okta is not making money, I think. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Let's look at some of their financials. But I saw that gap on it. I said, eh, I like this. Uh, they're losing $691 million. They have cash on hand, $14.65. They have 161 million shares. What's 14 times 161 million? Let's see. The answer is $2,254,000,000. Yeah, they got about two, three years of cash on hand. So they're not going to need to dilute you. Um, the average share price is, target price is 93. The most recent was uh, June. A downgrade from JP Morgan to 85, a downgrade from BMO to 85. So it's 85 and you're trading at 70. So I, I do think that Okta has a, uh, a, a chance to, to, to get back up there. Uh, I like this one. Now, a couple that I, I've been looking at, Roblox, under 40. I think you get this one under 40. I think it goes back over 40 if you want to trade that one. Uh, Uber at 47. Their earnings are coming up quick. I like to get this one before their earnings on July 31st. I don't know that I'm going to have the chance to. I think it's a $50 stock at the end of earnings. Uh, Shopify. Talked about Shopify. Their earnings are coming up August 2nd. I like this one. Uh, I think it's a $70 stock when their earnings come out. I think they're going to do really well. The issue that I have is you're coming down and you've got a gap down here between 48 and 54 if they haven't gotten their costs under control, that's where the issue comes in. So, um, yeah. Okay, let's see. NVIDIA, Netflix. Netflix is down under 420. <clears throat> I will add more to this one. I just have a, I have a conviction in this one. It's a long-term buy. I've only bought in three out of the 10 lots that I want in this one. But I do think that the, it may hit this gap now at 409. I'm waiting for confirmation. I bought two, two lots, one at 435 and one at, I think, 431. Um, so I, I've got a couple of lots in there. It's down, doesn't feel well. But you know what? I think at some point in time, it starts to go up. Their revenue was the problem. The revenue's coming in Q3. Essentially, you know, it's as big as that. The, the, the writers and the, the director strike, probably not a huge issue, but if they do have to pay more to uh, produce content here in this country, that's where they'll get hurt. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, remember, Linktree, uh, L-I-N-K, where is it? Uh, there it is. 
Uh, Linktree has everything. Facebook right there. Twitter. Instagram. You can choose anything. Trendspider. This is the, the link to get 25% off Trendspider. Those are the charts that I showed you. Visible. $20 off your first month of service. If you don't have Weeble, and I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I love Weeble. And I know I post this a lot. I do love Weeble. I use both. Uh, Fidelity is my main account. Uh, that's my main brokerage. That's where I have a large amount of uh, my stuff. But I put $1,000 into Weeble at the beginning of the year. And let's see. How much do I have now? We'll do a little uh, check. $1,415. $1,415. So I'm up 40%. 40% for the year. Not bad. Um, I do like... The, the, there's two things that I like in Weeble. The app... Uh, and the desktop software will include that both in one. If you don't have a charting program and you don't want to subscribe to TrendSpider, get Weeble. Don't use Robinhood. I saw some dude doing a technical analysis on his phone on Robinhood yesterday on YouTube. You don't do technical analysis with Robinhood. You know, you get the Weeble app. It's free. You don't even need to have an account to get the Weeble app. But get Weeble. Just deposit like a, a hundred bucks into Weeble. Use this link that I have on my link tree and you'll get 12 free stocks. Get free stocks. Go over to Weeble. Um, but I really do like it. The second thing that I really like about Weeble is they provide me a great morning update. I really like their morning news section. Uh, just scrolling through it and looking through it. Uh, it's a retail trader's dream. And if you're into trading, day trading and looking at options and things of that sort, get it. It's, it's very, very useful. I do not like Robinhood, and I absolutely do not steer people towards Robinhood. Robinhood is a great integration of the app, but the actual services they provide are horrible. Try and take your money out of Webull, uh, out of uh, Robinhood. I have taken my money out of Webull. Super simple. Very easy. Don't get a $70 fee to put my money out. Um, but... Robinhood? Yeah, try and pull your money out of there. So, okay, uh, I am done. I will be back on tomorrow. Remember, my big pick today is Meta. I like Meta under 300. Okay, take care.